Okay, so without uh, without pulling the excavator out and all that, we're just going to, I just backed it in here. I don't have quite enough room to get the entire trailer in and MIG weld. So you need shield of gas. Um, so what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna clean up these spots that we're gonna put D-rings. I haven't really quite decided where I'm gonna put them yet, but it needs some damn D-rings in this thing. Uh, and I don't know, I don't know if we ever did a video. You probably can't see, I got it all plugged in stuff. I guess you can, see the lift gate? Um, we put those runners in there. I mean, it still deviated the, the expanded metal, putting the mini skid up it and everything else, but I'm surprised it actually moved that expanded metal that much, but that is pretty small expanded metal. But man, putting those runners in there and I've got kickers back here, it's a lot better. So let's grab some D-rings and we'll kind of see where we're gonna put these things. I don't remember what they yield, but it's uh, Ericsson, just a little 5,000 pound hook. We hold mowers on this. We hold the mini skid on it, I know. It should have bigger D-rings. I mean, I bought these, these are 3 8 6,600 pound, I don't remember what they were, 2,200 pound uh, loading, or you know, use or whatever. Actually, that doesn't fit bad on that. This is a bit bad on that, I don't know. I mean, I'm really putting it to the expanded metal, so. And most times all I do is, I guess I'll show you over here. Most times what I do is I literally just put it up and I put the bottom side there and literally do that. Um, I mean, it works out really good. Like I said, we hold mowers. Um, the mini skid on here, yes, but we'll have four different straps. Normally, we might have one strap on the front. A lot of times, I'll put a heavier D-ring on the front. But we've got state pockets up there on the sides here. Um, a lot of times, we'll put a single big strap, like a two or three inch strap on it, and then the little one inch straps in the back. Um, you're supposed to have 50% of your load. That gets us well above 50% of the load. So these being 5,000 pounds, they're probably 1,850 or 1,600 uh, working range, I would guess. Um, that gets us more than what our 1,000 pound straps hold. And then if we have a mower on it, this holds more than a 1,000 pound strap does one. So it should be covered. Um, what the heck are they? Okay, brand new one sitting right here. This is what I'm talking about when I call it a two or three inch strap. They are two inch because these are maximum maximum of 10,000 pounds, which is your braking, and then 3,300 pounds is your wheel. When it's your project, you can do it however you want. This is kind of how I do it. Haven't had an issue yet. Just kind of put it where I like it. And I literally paint dot the center of it. That way I grind that spot and call her done. And I weld the bolt hole up in there and in the deal because it's made to attach by that bolt hole. I mean, sometimes I'll kind of weld the, the top and bottom of that tab, but I'm not necessarily worried about it. It's all she wrote.
two bubbles on the back, she penetrated all the way through. All right, well, another thing here that I'm, I'm debating on knocking out today. I, I know everybody loves these hitches. God, I hate these hitches. See, look, does that collar slip back? No, it doesn't. You get it close, collar slip back? Not really. Kind of enough, then you're up here kicking it, and you gotta kick it that way to get it undone. You know, you're doing this shit and that, and stupid. I hate them. Two, it's a two inch coupler, which I know it ain't a big deal, but it's nice. My truck over there's got a two and five sixteenths. Other truck, it'd be nice if it had a two and five sixteenths. That way, anything we back up to, we're good to go. These couplers, not sponsored. I ain't sponsored by anybody. So anybody ever watches my videos, nobody gives me nothing. I buy everything. Um, Demco, easy latch. This one is 21,000 pound. Do you need a 21,000 pound hitch on this trailer? No way, shape, or form. But it's what I got. I like them. You drop them down, it kind of goes boop. It latches on its own. Put an adjustable uh, deal on it, and we're good to go. So I think we're going to cut this. And this lines up with the channel pretty good. Normally they do. To where I could weld that right to that channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this coupler off. I'm going to give me, I don't know, half inch, quarter inch, three eighths, probably a half inch. And that way I can clean that steel up. I'm going to cut it straight across here. I'm going to cut it up on the other side. Get rid of this damn thing. We still have our safety chains in the factory spots and everything else. It'll work out just fine. Um, and then I think we're going to put, to see... Safety chains be just fine right there. Um, I think I'm going to put that coupler on there. I've got some gussets for up here. If I feel like I need it, I'll cut into this to where I can get to that channel. And I'll bed a weld and then we'll weld it in. It looked like it was blended and never was a thing. Don't necessarily need all this, but we're going to leave it for structure because uh, why not? It's there. Might as well just leave it alone. But I think we're cutting this bitch off. I, I don't like it. I hate it. Um, anyways, I may, uh, I think I'm going to put the hitch in the white truck out there, kind of get an idea on height, so maybe I can get it to where it's in the center holes for that. I may cut this down. I thought about cutting at least one set of holes off and just leaving it a five hole, so you get bottom, middle, and top. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, because it doesn't need, you know, that much adjustment on a lawn trailer. A lot of times I'll put a uh, four hole on it, which is about like that. Uh, but I thought about cutting it that way at least I've got three positions to pick from but anyways let me get set up let me get the stuff pulled back out we just did the d-ring video here's the d-rings welded them in so now it's got d-rings in it there's the the uh, runners I put kickers you can see the kickers back there because putting a mini skid up on these it doesn't like going up on an air gate it runs up on this and you don't even know it now that's amazing um, so we do that to most of them. Um, but anyways, let me get set up. We'll get a measurement on that truck. I think we're cutting this thing off. I got a little bit of time left. So uh, let me let me get set up and we'll get turned back on. Eyes on, ears, make it happen.
Now, some of you certified welders out there, if for some reason you're watching my video, uh, you're gonna tell me some cool stuff. Sorry, I had to blow the camera off. You're gonna tell me some cool stuff about something, um, unless it's super constructive and you just see something that I am doing. Sorry, I'm gonna wipe, my, wipe some mud off my mini skid. Unless you're gonna tell me some uh, revelation of something that'd make it absolutely amazing, um, probably good. So this is pretty thick material. This is three eighths, and I thought, I mean not, uh, I mean three sixteenths. I'm sorry, it's not three eighths. Three sixteenths, uh, maybe ten gauge, but uh, it looks like seven. It looks like three sixteenths. Um, anyways, so. I was gonna cut this out. I didn't think about it being that thick. I mean, you can see it's pretty thick. I'm gonna I'm gonna weld. I'm probably gonna do two passes. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a root pass to to our hitch. See how it bevels there. I'm gonna do a root pass on it, and then I'm gonna fill it. I'm gonna do a fillet pass there. Uh, if I put gussets on it, I'm probably just gonna attach. I'm probably just gonna do a small gusset in here. I was gonna do a bigger gusset and tie it back. Guys, this is a 7K trailer. It's got two 35s under it. This is way more hitch, way more anything than what this little bit of attachment was. Um, it, it's not going to have a problem. I used to build trailers. Uh, I've, I've never had a failure. Granted, saying that, this one's going to fail. But uh, I've, I've literally never had a failure. So I'm going to go out. I'm going to put a hitch I'm going to put the hitch that normally lives in that truck in that truck. And uh, I'm going to measure it. I'm probably going to make this hitch sit a little high. Because that way if I put this trailer on my other truck, it's not going to sit crazy high. But I am going to get an adjustable coupler or adjustable hitch for it. So we'll basically set it up for that white truck. So give me a minute to do that and we'll be back. All right, well, I ended up cutting it off, made it a five hole. Um, anyways, probably didn't need to, but that's kind of what it did. Just felt like doing that. So let's. I really like that magnet. Guys, I can probably make this thing a four hole. To be honest with you. Hell, we may just make it a four hole. I need I need to either go up or down with it. My thought was is my buddy's a machinist and I get he makes stuff too. But I get gussets all the time. And I don't think it needs a gusset, but what would be nice about a gusset, is you can hang a chain on it. And it just seems handy. And it's functional. I, you know, to give a little bit of strength. I don't, like I said, I don't think it needs it. Um, but. do what to do. I really think I'm going to cut another hole off that so then I can lower that down and then that would probably be fairly flush right at the bottom. Let's get it kind of where it would be happy time. And then that puts me in the middle ones and then somebody could still drop it down and still bring it up if they really needed it moved is it affecting anything not really it would look better as a four hole i'm gonna go cut it off give me a minute chopping her up well, let me tell you something guys this is a cheap well i mean a cheaper Band saw came from Northern Tool. Again, I'm not sponsored by nothing. But let me show you something. When you can slice off 
I mean, I would call that a sliver. That's less than a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, we were trying to get close tolerances on something when I, when I was making something. But I mean, look at the evenness of that cut. Can you see that? I mean, come on now. There, there's another one. Same project. Obviously, we had two gussets or, you know, two pieces of tube and something. Look at that. I mean, the initial cut and then the the shave, if you want to call it that, uh, that's pretty good. Anyways, we'll get that cut and we'll get to going again. Maybe we'll put those gussets there. Let's bed a weld in there first. Try to be even with everything when you're welding it. Just my advice, not, I'm not any kind of instructor or anything. I'm a self-taught welder. Learned on my own, a little bit in school, not really. Did woodworking in school. I like doing it, I just, I like steel better. Man, that is dead on, wow. I mean, at least there. And it looks really parallel. They did a really good job getting these frame rails just tied in and at the same length and everything. I mean, it just looks, that looks totally square with the trailer. So they did a good job on that tongue. I mean, a lot of times they just run them rough up in there and whatever length they are and all that is what they are. Boy, look at that. That worked out good. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. So we'll get this on right now before we start welding everything. We'll get those tacked in there and that way it'll help keep it from pulling anymore as well with the heat. Pretty even, that looks good. I like it. I like it. Oh, let's see. Let's burn a little bit back here, we'll burn a little bit there, and then we'll weld that. Try to try to do even even strokes with everything.
that in itself would hold that on there. that sit there and cool down for a second. you what we're doing here way overkill way overkill but we've got that all fully welded in back here it goes it gives it some strength and some rigidity uh, it doesn't need it like i said uh we got a root pass under there and then i cover past this and then we're going to cover past this tie this metal into that weld um i kind of uh, i need to change the lens in my hood sorry i got the hiccups I uh, need to change the lens in my hood. Couldn't quite see. Plus I'm old. So, but there's your rip pass. And then I'm going to run over this and tie that rip pass into this. We'll weld this, fully weld it like we did the other side. And then I'll go back and I'll tie this piece into that with the weld. I'll weld down there and we'll be done. We'll be ready to paint. I think I might get underneath here and just kind of close that channel up. Weld it up to this piece. I've cleaned it up. So... We'll go ahead and do that and we'll bolt the coupler in it and let it cool off a little bit more and we'll paint it and it'll be good to go. So. All right, as you can see, tied that, tied this piece back here into my my secondary pass that was on top of my root pass it ain't moving so it that's like way overkill this one i kind of did the reverse that I, I welded over here first and then i laid my my secondary root pass on it uh or my secondary pass that ties this on so there's actually weld here and then i went over it with this weld it, it's not moving uh well there you go we put a hitch on it or a different hitch got rid of that damn thing i mean i know a lot of you guys might like them bulldogs that might not have been that thing i, I hate them bulldog couplers you always got to fight with the top deal this thing's nice and they make these in two inch uh when you drop this down it kind of goes clunk. and then to take it off you're done good to go but we always try to get two and five sixteenths couplers on on all our trailers that way it's got one ball mount in the back don't have to change it out like oh man what does that trailer like oh that trailer likes the four inch drop with this and that nope we set it up to where we could back a truck up to the trailer hook it and go yeah, it's already got the ball mount in it so anyways um there's doing a hitch all right we're, there you go she's all painted up pretty and uh let's see so we can go and cross our chains 
And we got a place to hang our chains on that nice little gusset. There you go. That was a quick, easy little project. Um, I don't know if it's necessary. I always put my bolts in one side, the other side. Uh, while this is hot, I kind of tap that. Squeeze that up just a little bit because they're always a little loose. They kind of flop around. Now it's snug. I don't know if it's supposed to be loose, but I don't like it. It bugs me having it back there bouncing around. But anyways, that turned out pretty good. Per turned out pretty good. Um, anyways, but there you go. Modifying a trailer. Like I said, we did the tongue. Did some D-rings. So it ought to be a little more useful now. We'll see what Sammy thinks.